Hi everyone, it's Google Icris. First of all, I wish you my best wishes for this new year 2022 with a lot of tech, games, love, subscribers, like, etc. It was pointed out to me that my descriptions were in English, but my video were in French. And so today I'm giving you this gift for 2022, this magnificent tour in English. You will excuse me for this English from a French tech YouTuber. So I decided to start this year with a visit of my setup because it's something that I like for some time. Instead of making a video for each tech devices, I preferred to do everything at the same time through this global tour. During this beautiful moment, I will try to be the most frank with what I will present to you with the famous pros and cons. Let's start at the beginning. The connected living room setup. You won't be able to escape this magnificent 65 inch screen from LG. It's the LG CX, one of the best OLED screen on the market in 2020-2022 for gaming. For technicians, it manages 4K 120Hz, Cinema HDR, VRR, LLM, Dolby Atmos, Dolby Vision, IQ, etc, etc, all these gaming um, options. And I highly recommend it if you are looking for a special gaming or even cinema TV model in addition to the currently lower prices. I bought it like two months before it dropped in terms of price. And I'm very satisfied with the interface and the connectivity of the television. I often use the Play functionalities, Chromecast for YouTube, and indeed all the web OS video on demand applications, which I find do the job very, very well. A few negative points that I encountered as a slightly messy adjustment interface like airplay sound settings like very complicated or at most settings you have to deal to mail some some options and the lack of hdmi ports so well uh, i wanted to connect my xbox series x my ps5 my ps4 my tv box my soundbar and that's five ports it's a bit complicated and there's few bonding phenomena but barely visible in water tax scenes. You should know that LG is normally very comfortable with the OLED technology. So theoretically, I hope to be able to last like five or six years at least. Now let's go to the sound system. Even if I found the sound of the LG fairly correct, even stunning in some cases, I preferred to invest in a real surround system, as little wire as possible. My choice was quickly made on Sonos devices since I already had Sonos speakers. It costs less to reuse acquired speakers. It's not cheap, I understand. But knowing the brand, I know that I will have it for at least five or six years, maybe. Concretely, I have two real satellite speakers, uh, the one is still black, and a soundbar just behind, the Hawk soundbar just below the TV. And in fact, that's enough. I had hesitated to take the subwoofer, 800 euros to, to add much more at earthquake, it's not worth. The speaker with the two rear speakers do the job. In time of life, I think it's, it's good. Even sometimes I have to radio them so much, it shakes my apartment, so it's not good. The advantages of the system is that everything is managed through the TV remote control here with a plus and minus, and it's extremely simple. And the smartphone as well, you can do this with the applications. The negative points, they are known. I think it's good. Maybe the price is a worthwhile investment. Let's talk about the famous console stored at the bottom in the right order. The famous Xbox Series X just hidden on the left. In fact, it served me a little just before the end of the year celebrations at the end of 2021. I played like Halo in Forza. To be originally a fervent PC player, I consider that the Series X is in fact my PC, but connected to a giant screen just behind me. I would mainly use it to play WoW effect game without being in a competition environment. What I really like about this console is the famous Game Pass. Yes, you can play all the game in no time. If you're even too lazy to download it, you'll be able to use it by the cloud and directly without waiting anything. There is also the speed to switch from a game to another, the ergonomics of the controller. I know it's fairly subjective opinion but uh, I found the controller much more comfortable than that of the PS5. I find 
a little bit bigger. For the negatives, um, well, you know, no incredible next-gen exclusive games, and suddenly we will be satisfied with the cross-gen game and remake in 4K in ray tracing versions. And you see the design of the console. It's so good integrated that it makes its life a port. You, you know it, you see it just behind. So in terms of accessories, I have a controller stand that allows me to recharge the two controllers with third-party lithium here. You can see that. Now let's move on to the PS5. Well, I've said a lot about it. You can see my video just above. Since the time nothing special, I quickly finished the game I bought. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. What has surprised me over time is the management of the adaptive triggers here, right here. Yes, in the hand, they are supported in a lot of games and it's not an anecdotal feature. Long life to Tendonitis here, yes. Good overall, the games are about the same as the Xbox Series X, without Forza or Halo, but with Spider-Man and Ratchet and Death Stranding, etc. I'm not going to hide it from you, but I don't have as much hype with the next gen since I've got these consoles, and I'm waiting to see the Unreal Engine 5 on all games, like Matrix, not before 2023 maybe, I don't know. The negative points are the same as the Xbox. In terms of accessories, same as Xbox Series X2, I have an official stand to charge the two rechargeable batteries, and no, they are not using Duracell batteries, they are uh, included here inside. Well, here it is. I still hesitated to sell it, but it's an act of figuration. The PS4 Slim 500 gigs. Now let's talk about the infrastructure, which all all these machines by the force of four feet. The TV cabinet from Maison du Monde. It's a solid hook, and it's simply called the Magnus. There are three large drawers. I put the wire accessories and game and all the mess inside. That's good. Sometimes the drawers are difficult to close. That's good too. We can also talk about the carpet here. Synthetic texture reminiscent of a rabbit skin. I bought it at Conforama, like an IKEA store, but pure French people. Very soft and you can write on it. Yes. Finally, let's talk about the lights. Present here, even in all the room, in all the apartments. So it's simple here. All the lights are connected. You could say I have a partnership with Philips. Ah, no, I hope. So on the left side, I have the first to go. Still, still good, but I, I think the battery has reduced its capacity a bit. So yeah. Just behind the TV, the two you play, which are not synchronized with the picture, but it could be. I made a video about it to see how to synchronize. Uh, I struggle to remove them and put them in the more in center of the TV to see less the halo of light. Negative points or remark. The you plays make a kind of clicking noise when they are turned off. Can it be electrostatics or is it on purpose? I don't know. I have a classic E14 lamps. In the lamps, everything is set in the, the Uplay application. Uh, I can control everything with my voice and Google Home. Hey Siri or OK Google. Let's go to the PC gaming setup. You wonder what office this is? So it is a motorized bamboo flexi spot controlled by this touch interface. But beware, it's not connected. And here is the beast that I use for everything. Office, games, editing, heating, lighting, everything. It's a PC that I bought more than five years ago that I use, upgraded as I went. Today, this uh, 2016 monster is made up of an 8 core CPU, the i7 9700K, and an RTX 2016 Super with uh, 32 gigs of RAM and all in mini. ITX Thermatalk Core V1 case accompanied by a 2K 165Hz IPS screen from Asus Boat in 2016 as well. No complaints about this configuration. All the games I played run smoothly on high, so I'm still on Windows 10. Regarding the, the accessories, I'm almost sponsored by SteelSeries, Apex M750 mechanical keyboard, the Rival 300, 6500 DPI optical mouse, and the Arctic 5, and all its accessories have the RGB lights and are synchronized with a SteelSeries GG application. For my streams and any other very useful shortcuts, I use the 15 button version of the Stream Deck. In practice, it's not necessarily useful, but it can have aesthetic words. Yeah, here is 
an authentic Switch version 1 from 2017 right next to my computer with all its faults. I have the Joy-Con drift, which I managed to mitigate thanks to the cardboard technique. The Bluetooth that picks up and it goes wrong sometimes. That's why I play almost with my Pro Controller all the time. With my Switch, I mainly play with the most incredible games of all time, Pokemon Unite and Fortnite. Let's move on to the long-awaited big subject on the background lights, the Nano Leaf. They are LED panels that you can arrange and hang on the wall as you wish. They are connected via the Nano Leaf application, so it can be very handy when it's not lagging. I must have spent a good evening just to choose the shape and the location on the wall. In short, these Nano Leaf are tactile, react to the sound and the ambient light as well, if it's not stylish. The main negative points, the application, which is not always reactive, is not compatible with uh, the Philips U application, yes, with the Apple Kit and the price. You have to buy it during the sales. And there you go. And how about the setup for the shots? For the video, I use the very famous Sony a7 III. I shoot in 4K, 24fps, 100 Mbps for the best quality. I use a different feed for stabilization, uh, Manfredo B3 and the Rona SC from DJI, the best accessories in the world. For audio, I use a Rode Lavalier microphone, very good quality as well. For lighting, I use several lights, uh, the Falcon Eye 48, dimmed line panel with the battery and you can control temperature, the intensity of light. As well, the Falcon Eye F7 version 2, very practical, very convenient, ultra portable LED panel. You can also control the intensity, the color, you have some scene like police or ambulance, I don't know, everything. And that ends the setup tour. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you like the content or not, I don't know, maybe you don't like my English. Do not hesitate to say so in the comment section and like the video. Subscribe to the channel. See you soon. Have a nice day. Tschüss.